by popular request, a day in the life of an irrigation technician. Today we're in Coral Springs, Florida, my hometown, to update this old Intermatic timer to a brand new Hunter Pro C controller. And the reason behind that is the customer didn't know how to operate this timer when I first came on to this property. I educated him on it so he would understand it. And still after that education, he wanted something a little bit more user friendly. So the Hunter P2C or the Pro C2 controller is what he's gonna get on the wall. Let's uh, not waste any more time. Let's get this thing on the wall because that thing scares me. I don't, I don't like the way that thing looks. And talk about a tight situation to be working in. To be clear, there's nothing wrong with this timer. It's actually rather new. And I know that because they swapped the clear plastic piece here to a black plastic piece and everything looks relatively new in there. So we're just gonna take this one off the wall place that one in its place. It will be fun to figure out how I'm going to fit that on there. We'll see what happens. And there you have it. The Hunter Pro C controller has been installed in place of the Intermatic timer that was right there. We also moved it down because we didn't want to move the conduit over to place the, the controller up here. It also helps to hide the controller behind the bushes. The homeowner was really happy with that idea. The other thing you'll notice here is we do still have an indexing valve. We let the customer know that they can upgrade the controller first and still use the indexing valve and then upgrade the valves in the future. And that's what the customer chose to do. This is a budget friendly solution at the moment. We'll come back in the future and upgrade all of this. You see a combo valve there, but there is actually a backflow in the bushes up here. So that's why you see a combo valve. I know I'm gonna get comments about this. There's the backflow for the irrigation system. That's why there's a combo valve over there. All right. Now that I got that controller installed, we're going to head over to a pump install next and keep this video rolling. So on to the next one. And now we're at the next one here. We're going to replace this pump with a Gould's GT15. All we have to do is make a couple of cuts like one right there, one right there. We're not just going to replace the pump here, though. We're also going to install a new check valve, which I imagine is the reason why this pump stopped working in the first place, because it's running dry. So. We're gonna get rid of this pump, install the Gould's pump, and get it back up and running. Probably should have filmed this part, but I didn't. I couldn't get that bottom bolt off because it was stripped out. We are replacing this pump, so we don't actually need any of the pieces. And as you can tell where my thumb is right here, all I had to do to get it off is beat the crap out of it. And then eventually it popped off. Now we can get to the wires. The other thing I noticed while I was doing that is somebody has used some kind of adhesive to put this together, so we can't reuse that connector. I wouldn't have reused it anyway, but just pointing out that that can't be reused because of that reason. And look at the corrosion on those wires. So we'll restrip all those back and make them all nice and shiny again before we put them on the new pump. More fun stuff to show you. Because this wasn't connected when I got here, there's actually water inside of the conduit. So now we don't have to wonder why things got so corroded so quickly. That's how. When I'm done here, that won't be like that. So before I make the final connection, I actually noticed how the water got in. Do you see it? Yeah. So what I'm gonna try to do is blow backwards on this side of the conduit here. And see if water comes out over there. So let's see what happens. Well, water came out, now it's clear. Okay, without the water in there, we'll go ahead and make our final connections, get us wired up over here and get that reconnected over there in the opposite order. And there she is, all nice and clean. All right, let's close up the back and plumb up the front. And there she is, all installed and ready to go. You'll notice I used some male adapters. That wasn't my intention today. I definitely brought nipples with me. Here's one of them right here. I'd like to point out how shiny this nipple is because look what happens when I stick it in a coupling. It goes right in and it's hard to see here, but there's play and the coupling or the fittings all the way in and there's play. So that nipple is not making full contact with the coupling. I'm definitely not going to use that as part of the install. Jeez, Justin, what'd you do here? That's ugly. Whoops. Don't let the public see that. All right. Now let's show the customer. Before I say on to the next one, because that is the case, we've got one more appointment for today and we'll document that one in this same video. We made it to our third appointment. It's a Wells Fargo. And the first thing I saw when I got out of my truck, here's my truck right here. 
well, we've got a funny pipe zone. And you know, I just thought it was one head split into two here until I looked down the line there and I saw more funny pipe, more funny pipe. This whole damn zone is funny pipe. That's actually not why they called us. That's just the first thing I noticed when I pulled up. They called us because they had a problem at the pump. Let's go take a look at that. Well, there's the indexing valve. Happy Florida to you. Oh, oh boy. Where's the other indexing valve? Oh, there it is. Well, I've got some explaining to do on this one. Let's go look at the pump before I explain that. And here's the pump. Do you see the problem? Do you see it? Yep, that blew off. And you know why? Probably because the person who installed all these fancy new fittings never opened the ball valve. Jeez. All right, now onto this indexing valve situation that we got going on here. You see, we got one right here. We got another one across the road right there. And then behind me and around the corner right there, we had another one. So the way that this works is when water comes through this indexing valve, it's going to put water through one of the, the four pipes coming out of here, which will send, we'll just say in this case, to that indexing valve, which will then throw the water into one of those four pipes. And then that goes out to the field. The next time this thing turns off, it switches to another pipe and it'll send water to that indexing valve, to one of the pipes in that indexing valve. And then when the water turns off, it'll send water back to that indexing valve to the next pipe. And then we'll repeat this process until we've been through all eight zones that are attached to those two indexing valves that are attached to that master indexing valve. This is gonna be a fun one to test. It's also going to get an upgrade proposal because this is just ridiculous to have to test all this stuff, but that's how we do it in Florida with indexing valves all over the place. I don't even know how I let this one get past me while I was explaining all of this to you guys. Do you see it? They couldn't take the old timer out. Maybe they couldn't find the breaker. So even then they would still have to turn off the power, but it looks like they jump circuited from this timer to that timer. This, this is just all kinds of, man, my head's about to explode. Yep, power's coming right in here, right in here, and going right back out over to here. All right, upon a closer inspection, it looks like this old timer box is just being used as an old junction box, which isn't the correct way to do things. This timer should have been removed. An actual junction box should have been installed on the wall right here with a face plate and screws in it so it couldn't be easily opened like this. I also noticed we got one circuit coming in for our pump over here, and there's a second circuit that comes in here and goes right back down into the ground and goes out, which is probably why they left this box here. As I said, they should have installed a proper junction box so that the wires are secure in there and not behind this little door that doesn't really close all the way. All right, so instead of a junction box down there, all I'm going to propose is to take that controller timer and move it over there. And once I do that, then we don't have all this craziness going on. And I also got to propose to fix that. All right, proposal set. Customer's going to review it with their board of people who approve those things and give us a call back in a few minutes. So we'll see if we stick around and make that repair today. I'm going to close this video out. That was the three appointments from today. If I get this thing done, I'll knock it out and get it in a video, maybe upload it to another portion of another video another day. But if not, I'm out of here.